Guys, how we doing today? We're on YouTube now. We're on Zoom Live now. Appreciate you all being here. Today's subject in the Leadership Locker Room, we're going to talk about Brick Building Foundation. We're going to talk about how to really maximize our pay plan with what we call a little Brick Building Foundation. I'm going to get to it in a minute. But before I do, great weekend, everybody. A uh, lot of great things happening. You guys, uh, we broke records in July and August has already taken off very, very well. So I appreciate all of you for doing your part. And uh, we're very excited about getting all the bonuses into your back offices. They're not listed yet. Your residuals are, of course, but your bonuses uh, will all be from January 1st on will be added. And so you can have them in your records for 1099s and for, of course, just for, you know, tracking your incomes. Uh, I love tracking growth. I mean, it's a, it's a, hey, after all, money is a measuring stick. It's not happiness, but it is a me measuring stick. And it's, it's a lot easier to be happy uh, with money in the bank than without because some money, no money in the bank limits some decisions, right? So it's not necessarily that money buys happiness, but um, money is needed many times to take care of responsibilities and different things. Uh, you're, you know, your car breaks down tomorrow, money uh, helps prevent that becoming from a disaster, right? So um, obviously money is the scoreboard. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other currencies in the world that we're trying to build and create and make an impact. Um, but certainly compensation matters. So we, we can't ignore it. Uh, it's like your blood pressure, you can't ignore it. Uh, maybe it doesn't mean happiness, but it's better to have good blood pressure than bad right? And um, diabetes, you know, you don't want to ignore it. It's better to not have it than have it. But if you have it, you manage it and you deal with it, right? So it's better to to, to build healthy lives um, than to not be healthy. Well, same thing as money. Bank accounts are the exact same thing as health. Financial health is the same as physical health. Obviously, physical health matters more. Uh, but financial health is something we should be focused on driving uh, and improving. And so today, what I'm going to talk about, this is all about team growth. This is the leadership locker room, which is for people who want to lead organizations, want to open new markets, want to dominate their current market, want to monopolize their marketplace, want to own their territory, want to make sure every business in their community knows who they are. And when it comes to funding or ERCs or whatever, you become their go-to person or someone in your team does because you've built a, a, identified a local team to help you and you're leading that local team. That's what this calls for. Uh, if you're not doing that yet, I encourage you to start doing it. If you're saying, I just want to focus on gathering customers, then great. You should just focus on gathering customers. Today's Zoom is not for you. In fact, none of the Monday Zooms are for you. Uh, these are designed for the people who are leading teams. So much like McDonald's franchisees go and run their restaurant, McDonald's corporate is working on improving the franchise model all the time. Uh, which includes how you make burgers and how you talk to customers and sourcing ingredients and sourcing napkins and plates and all that kind of stuff, right? But uh, when it really comes down to it, the, the employees are the one making the burgers, right? And we here, you and I are responsible. We get to be the corporate McDonald's and the person on the front line, meaning we get to build teams and be, take responsibility for helping those teams have success. So if you take responsibility for the teams you recruit, helping them have success, you can't control whether someone's successful or not, but you can control whether you assist them and encourage them and lead them or not. And if you're not assisting, encouraging, and leading, your odds of success in your team are far lower. So what I'm doing here today is discussing things you can do to help grow your successful network of agents, your portfolio of agencies, if you will. And that's what you really have is a portfolio. If you have 100 agents in your team, maybe you've got a portfolio of 100 agents, but how many of them are you qualified to get paid on? How many of them are producing? Those are things you can help tweak a few things to control. You know, a friend of mine's got a power boat. We were up at his cabin and he was pulling some tubes behind the boat. We had a lot of fun, but there were a couple of times it made a weird noise. And it almost sounded like the prop had come out of the water. It was like, Whoa! And you could feel the pressure, the, 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 the power slip a little bit. And then it would come back. It was almost like we hit bottom or the prop came out of the water. If you've ever you know, driven a boat, you know that noise. And I thought, oh, he's just hitting bottom. It's a little shallow here, maybe. He's hitting some sand. Or, or maybe we turned so fast the prop came out of the water for a moment. 
And later on that day, he said, yeah, I'm having an issue with the power in my, it was maybe three times in a whole two hours that I heard it. Um, but later that night, he went for, he was going to take a bunch of adults for just a ride on the boat. He's like, can't get, it's just not getting any power. It's just making noise, but it's not, he, he said that I think the transmission is slipping. I said, there's transmissions in boats. I didn't, I guess makes sense to anyone who knows, but I'm not uh, mechanically inclined like that. I'm like, I guess I didn't realize there was a transmission uh, in a boat. I thought the motor was connected directly to the prop and, but it makes sense. You need a transmission. And he said, I think it's just low on transmission fluid. That's all it is. I don't think the transmission's going, but if you don't have the transmission fluid, then sometimes the gear shifting doesn't happen as fluid as you want and it slips. And because of the slippage, you lose power. Well, that makes sense. Just a little thing like a little bit of fluid can change this beautiful, big power boat. It's pulling, you know, uh, uh, it's a ski boat and um, but a little bit of fluid missing and look what happens. And so it doesn't take much minor tweaks. You can really improve your horsepower. You can really improve the success of your business. So that's what these Mondays are designed to do. It's check your oil, basically. Let's check. So today we're going to talk about the game plan, the brick, if you will. We call it a brick. I, I like to call it just your first rank that you should be shooting for, but some people call it a brick. So let's use that logic, a brick building to your foundation, meaning there's certain things you want to do with brand new people. Maybe you've never heard this before because we don't we haven't talked about this much. Um, we talked about it in Saturday trainings and other things, but it's been a while. So what this is is when you recruit someone new, the way you get to the top of the pay plan, if you look at our compensation plan and look at the ranks, you know, if you become a regional vice president equity member, you actually are an owner of this company. And you're also a revenue sharing participant, which is probably more valuable or as valuable than ownership because you're getting a percentage of overall revenue every month. And or every quarter, actually, which becomes monthly. And so whether you own it or not, I mean, my stock is only worth something to me. It gives me a vote and it's worth something if I sell it. I'm not taking any profit sharing out. So having equity escape of revenue sharing means there's getting there's money being distributed every quarter in revenue to the per people who've qualified for that. So reaching the top ranks of our company is better than reaching the top ranks of Ford or Chrysler. I mean, those companies, you still got to work 70, 80 hours and, and you don't get to share in their revenue for life. You retire, you're done, bye. You maybe have some stock, you got some stock options, but those are only good if you sell them. So we have equity and revenue sharing. I think revenue sharing, every one of you be, should be shooting for. If you love DAC, why not put it in your game plan to say, I'm going to go get revenue sharing and let that cash cow. That may be more than the check you ever make. So that is what I'd be shooting for if I were you. Now, this is the leadership locker room. So that means to reach the top ranks, you need three organizations that are going for it. Okay. You need three groups that are going for it. So if you've got, if you don't have three teams yet that are going for it, you want to get to the point where you do. Okay. So senior vice president equity, SVP equity is when you have 200 personal residual revenue and you have 2 million in your group, 2 million in your group, 2 million residual revenue in your group. Uh, that comes from every service we sell, residual and funding and everything else, right? And um, no more than 40% from any one leg, which means what's 40% of 2 million? Real quick, $800,000 in case you're not real quick with math. $800,000 is 40%. So you can only count $800,000 from any one leg toward that 2 million. So even if you got 5 million in this leg, you only get to count 800 of it toward your promotion. Why? We want you to have balance of at least three teams. If you have, if you recruit me and I recruit Steve and Steve does 5 million, we both don't get to become, yeah, we're over 2 million in group I and we're all, everyone above Steve is now a senior vice president equity member. That, that doesn't work. So you have to have balance. You'd have to have two other legs besides Steve's leg, right? So you can only count eight, 40% of whatever the group volume requirement is from a leg. Only 40% of that can come from one leg. So 2 million in group volume with 40% max means there's 800,000 max from one leg. So if you recruit me, if me and my team do a million, you get to count 800,000 of it toward your promotion. Now you get paid on all million. You're getting paid on all of it. But toward qualifications, you only would be able to count 800,000 of me toward your toward your top rank. Okay. Now, if you had two other organizations and they're all doing a million each, million each, well, now look at that. If you had three organizations all doing a million, you get 800,000 from each one. You had 2.4 million in group volume. You're a senior vice president, equity member. You got revenue sharing. You got equity in the company. 
and you're getting paid on a lot of volume. So how does McDonald's corporate do well? They bust their backside. They had a great restaurant. They built a lot of locations and a lot of locations. Everyone would love to own McDonald's today, but would you really want to build McDonald's from scratch? You know, many franchises fail that never make it to being what McDonald's is? Most. And so most people, everyone can do this and get to senior vice president equity member. Everyone can. Most won't, but everyone can. Everyone could start McDonald's and make a McDonald's. I don't mean the restaurant. I mean the corporation and build a whole new franchise and a new system and get all the machines. And they can do that. Everyone's capable of doing You're all, we're all capable of doing that. It really comes down to just saying that's what we're going to do, putting the plan down and doing it. That's all. And so if you need a plan to get to senior vice president, um, equity member, then you need three organizations, right? To be doing a certain size so you can get to that 2 million level. Now, some of you, it's not your goal to reach that rank, but let's just say there's a rank somewhere that you're trying to reach, okay? So senior vice president equity member is the 2 million rank. That's what we're trying to get to long-term. And how do you do that? One brick at a time. You don't need to, if you focus on three groups doing a million, that's a lot. Three groups doing a million, that's a lot. You know, it is. But it's not a lot when you look at it's just three leaders who are getting it done right. And those three leaders all have three organizations getting it done right, who have three organizations getting it done right. So the good news is it starts with the little brick, one brick at a time. What's the brick? The brick we want you to focus on is a rank called team trainer. Team trainer. Team trainer rank is the first rank in our organization where it requires you have three groups doing something. Okay. So you see, you've kind of created the, the DNA of a business that's going to grow. Uh, and it ha- doesn't have, those three groups don't have to be the ones who make it long term. But so let me just turn to this for a moment. And I don't have my camera and I don't see what you guys see. So let me just do this. Okay, Garrett, you could see that. Okay. So team trainer rank is when you have 100 personal residual revenue and you have 250 in your group. So let me just highlight this real quick because it's a little so team trainers 100 personal residual revenue and 250 in your group but no more than 40 percent of that can come from any one leg right so what's 40 percent of 250 40 percent of 250 is 100 so the max you can have from any one group is 100 so if this person here is uh lisa and she's got zero but lisa has Lindsay, and Lindsay has 50 residual revenue and Lindsay has three people and this one has 20, and this one has 20, and this one has 20. You have 20, 40, 60, 110 under this group. But you only get to count 100 of it. So you have one legs qualifying. You got 100 from that group. And if you got 100 from this person, 100 from this person. Okay. I didn't mute it. But how long have I been muted, guys? Just a second. It just okay, cool. Yeah, I'm not touching anything, so I don't know how, but it does. So team trainer, um, why do you want to be a team trainer? You want to be a team trainer because you get four levels of income match, residual levels of income match. So let me just show you what that means. Here's you. You get your personal commissions. You always make your 20 to 50%, right? You make 20 to 50% personal commission. That's you. And then you also get... Enroller, I'm talking residual here. You get enroller residual of the same 20 to 50 percent, depending upon your rank. But you also get, as team trainer, you get four levels of your team where you get a 25 percent match. You don't get this until you become team trainer. You get a 25 percent match on everything they earn in personal commissions through four levels on all those groups. So all those people, and they're what's called compressed levels, meaning someone doesn't count as a level this month unless they did volume, $50 in volume, in fact. So if you introduce, in this case, it was Lisa. Lisa did zero. Um, You wouldn't earn an enroller bonus on Lisa because she didn't do anything. But Lisa introduced Lindsay here, as we talked about. Lindsay would be level one for you this month because Lisa didn't do any volume. So Lindsay would be level one. You'd have $50 and residual revenue there, let's just say she made 50 in income for sake of simple math, 50 in income, you make 25% of her 50, made $12.50. 
And these, let's say they earn 20 each just for simple math, because I don't want to go back. Well, they made 20% of that, which would be four. And you get to, you know, you make 25% of whatever they make through four levels. So this starts to become your portfolio where you're getting revenue sharing. You're making 25% of whatever they earn in income. It's really income sharing, right? And they're not having to make less for you to make that. But you don't get these four levels until you become a team trainer. How do you become a team trainer? 100 personal residual revenue, three groups of at least, well, a certain amount, but it's got to be 250 total. And no more than 40% from any one leg. So no more than 100 from any one leg. So you need three legs producing volume. All right, so your goal, by the way, after you reach team trainer, the next group, the next rank is area trainer. It's 150 personal, 1,000 in your group, no more than 400 from one in one leg. The next one, regional trainer, 200 in your group, personal residual. 5,000 in your group, no more than 2,000 from any one leg. Area director, 200, 10,000 in your group, no more than 4,000 from any one leg. So all of these things have the same DNA, if you will. Three groups growing, no more than 40%. So if you look back at Team Trainer again, which was 100 personal residual revenue and 250 in your group, 250 total in these three groups, no more than 100 coming from any one leg. So 100 max a leg, all right? What do you have here? You have three groups. So now, once you're doing this, now all of a sudden, what are these three trying to do? Well, we don't know because we haven't talked to them. We don't know what they've watched. What's your What rank goal do you have? Maybe you've never had one until today. I got to get team trainer right away, okay? So what are these three goals? Get a funding, maybe. Get amped up, probably. But they also want to be focused on becoming a team trainer. Why? Because then they get four levels of their group. And it's the brick level. It's the brick foundation. It's the brick rank. So what do you want to tell these three people to do? You want them to become team trainers. That's the goal for them. Tom over here says, I'm never going to build a group. Okay, Tom is not going to be one of your three legs. It's all right. Tom's still there. You still get paid on him, but you want to introduce another one then. That's how we say keep going until you find a group of people that really want to build an organization too, not just get customers. You can have 20 people before you have three that are really going to try to become area directors. So, but your goal is team training for all these guys. So now let's watch how this works. Doesn't matter who they are. You got three people going for team trainer. How do they become team trainer? 100 personal. And then what do they have to do? They have to have three groups totaling 250, right? If all of them did it, 250, 500, 750, plus 100, you're at 850. You're already almost area trainer. And the reality is you'd be an area trainer because no one hits it exactly. This one, by the time they get to 250, this one might be at 500. This one might be at 400. When your shortest, your slowest leg gets to the 250, right? And, and, and the reality is these three people, this one may have recruited seven. If he's if he's encouraging, this one may have recruited six. If everyone's being encouraged at team trainer, this one's going for it, already recruited two. This one's going for it, already recruited three. This one's not going for it, not going for it. This one recruited someone who's going for it, who recruited three. And this these this one's already made it to team trainer. This one's already a team trainer. They're just rocking. And they've got people over here just already team trainer. So you're going to have a lot of volume coming for this. So it doesn't just go three by three. It never happens that way. I'm just showing the minimums on the board. What happens is this one recruits 17 and five of them make it, and two of them are already there going for uh, area trainer, right? And so, but you got to have the goal to shoot for it. In tennis, when you serve, there's a little box you have to hit the ball in. In baseball, when you hit the ball, there's two little lines called the foul lines. You got to hit the ball in. In your pitching, there's a little box, the strike zone. You got to throw it over to get a strike, right? There's, there's little goals and everything. In hockey, it's figure skating until you put up a net and say you get points to score. Other than that, it's ice dancing with a stick in your hand, right? Until you got a net, it's just ice. So, and then the figure skating, it's how you gracefully land a, a difficult move, 
right? So what is your goal here? It's just not just be here and be on a Zoom. It's hit a rank, hit a, hit team trainer. If you're not team trainer yet, set a goal to become team trainer before this calendar month ends. In fact, I've set a goal to go for every trainer before this month ends. And so how you do it is you build a team and you talk to them about becoming team trainer. You want them to get the four levels of pay because you don't know who's going to produce big volume and who's not. Remember, every funding, even if you're not eligible, there are overrides on it. If you're getting four level pay through team trainer, there's going to be residual revenue created on every funding that you're missing out on right now. Some of you can qualify to earn some nice checks on your team. So you want to make sure you're at this 100 person residual revenue and you've got your three groups going. All right. And then, of course, you go for area trainer. Why would one want to be an area trainer? Because it's a safe. First of all, it's a great benefit is just like anything else. But area trainer. Now you get one, two, three, four, five, six levels instead of four. So now you get six levels. But here you get six levels at 25 percent match. Six levels. You know how many people that could be thousands of agents that you're getting 25% of whatever they earn. Here you're getting four levels. And before you break team trainer, when you become qualified agent with 50 residual revenue, you get three levels. So you want three, four, six, and you can even get more by breaking higher ranks. Okay. And earn a higher on them. So this is called the brick rank, team trainer. Team trainer, it doesn't mean you're eligible to train others, but you are building a team of three. Your job is to help those three groups. Those three groups, you're overriding them. You earn 25% of whatever they earn. So this group right here, every person you see, you'd get 25% of their pay. This is a small group. There's probably 50 people on the board here, maybe 40. But 40 people, what did they all make between them? What if they all just made 100 bucks and they made four grand? You make 25% of that. You make $1,000 this month just in this 25% override, not counting big funding bonuses, not counting ERCs, not counting anything else, right? So you want to position yourself. McDonald's corporate gets a small percentage of every burger. It's small, what is it, 2%? Does it matter? There's millions being sold. You're getting 25% of what every one of these people earn once you're a team trainer. Area trainer, you get it through a lot more levels. Okay, the next rank, regional trainer, 200, 5,000, and 2,000, you get it through more levels. Okay, so then you're getting seven levels. Regional trainer is the seventh level. And I just want to, you've all heard of exponential growth. So so basically, the, the lesson of today is, Every new rep, you want them focused on becoming a team trainer to position themselves to earn the four levels pay minimum. You got to have three groups. So game plan for you. If you say, I want to get there, what are your requirements? Number one, you got to get to 100 personal residual revenue. Number two, you got to have three legs. So three groups uh, totaling 250 in group revenue, group residual revenue, with no more than 100 max in one leg. Okay, so you need three balanced legs, three legs. So what's your goal? In hockey, the goal is score without violating the offside rules and all that, right? What's your goal here? Three names. Who are the three people going to be? You need to make your list. You need to approach your warm market list and find out who wants to build a business with you. Not just who wants to be an agent getting customers. Who wants to build an organization with you? Those three legs. Who are the names going to be? One, two, three. That's what you want to fill out by the end of the month. Find out who's getting after it. The next thing you want to do is look at your 100 personal residual revenue. How are you going to get to 100 personal residual revenue? What are you at now? Well, you're going to get customers. It's healthcare customers. It's payment processing customers. It's funding customers. It's ERC customers. It's giggle customers. Now, the only ones that report immediate residual revenue are funding. Okay, funding is immediate or the DAC Protect product. There's people who've gotten three DAC Protect customers and they're already at the $50 level from a few customers. They, they go get more, they'd be here. There's people who got healthcare, $40 residual revenue. Now it won't show till next month because it signed up this month. It shows next month. So it's not immediate. We've got some other immediate services coming. But the good news is let's say you got uh, a $10,000 funding today. It's a thousand in bonus revenue that you make 40 to 80% on, 
is your income, and there's 100 residual revenue. You'd be qualified. You'd already be qualified with your 100 the next day. Okay? So don't forget, 1% of the funding on average is residual revenue. So you'd have your 100 residual revenue by getting a $10,000 funding. There's people who did that today. There's people who did that yesterday. Okay? So every funding, every line of credit draw, all those create, every renewal. There's people at renewals today that got qualified this month off of funding they got a year and a half ago, but they got a renewal Friday. And so they're qualified this month. So that's why it's beautiful. You can do this all with funding. It's just not as consistent because residual revenue, like payment processing and other things like that, you can expect them to continue. Funding, they may get a renewal, they may not, right? Payment processing, they're going to use it every month unless they leave your service, right? So this is the rank you want to shoot for. So you got to start looking at who are my three groups? Start asking people, do you want to build a team? If we were working together, I'd be asking you, what's your goals with this company? What rank do you want to reach? What rank do you want to reach and why do you want to reach it? Well, I want to reach it because I want to have a stable or residual income of $7,000 a month or $12,000 a month. I want a cash cow. I want to reach the top rank, senior vice president, equity position. I want equity and revenue sharing. That's what I'm going for. A 2 million residual revenue. That's where I want to be. The good news on that, 2 million residual revenue at the lowest possible income would be 20% of that 2 million, the lowest possible, which is 400,000. And you're making 25% of that lowest possible. You're making 100,000 a month minimum, minimum residually, minimum, not counting bonuses, nothing, nothing. You're getting 25% of all that 2 million residual revenue, which pays out minimum 400,000 in commissions to reps. And you're making minimum, actually you're 30% of that. So you're making 30% of 400,000, $120,000 a month plus revenue sharing, plus equity. And all you got to do is help three groups say, I see that, let's go get it. Let's go do it. Now you divide 2 million divided by $40. Well, that's 500, that's 500. I'm sorry, that's 50,000 healthcare customers to get to 2 million. That's a lot. It's not a lot when you got 10,000 reps and they all just got five. Oh, Wow. Or, um, you know, that's that's a lot of the super pharmacy product. Yeah, everything's hard. It's hard to do McDonald's volume until you've got 7,000 locations, right? So just know there's big money in the now. And when you turn something, if something can duplicate simple, which is we get customers and we get customer getters. That's it. That's all we do. We refer our services and find out who it's the right fit. And we don't beat ourselves up if someone doesn't want it, but we also communicate about it a lot. And then we get customers and then we recruit people and tell them we're looking for entrepreneurial type who want to help build this great business. There's no downside. There's plenty of upside. We're looking for people who want to build with us and you find a team and then those who want to build, you find out who wants to be a leader and actually make it to the right side of the pay plan, the far ranks. And you start talking about leadership with them. So I was here Saturday. We had a festival in town. I was here. I just erased the board. I don't know if you can see a bunch of chicken scratch back there. Um, but I was working on all the onboarding leadership, you know, from taking a brand new rep to getting started, to reaching first ranks, to uh, getting amped up, to going from the left side to the right side of the pay plan chart, to getting revenue sharing, to doing it all, to leading local markets, just pen, put it all on a whiteboard of everything we need to cover with a brand new rep, if they want that and when to cover it. So that's what we're working on right now is getting that all done. We got the new app meeting uh, this week, which is gaming, game creating gamemanship to this so that every new rep will have, we're gonna put the goals to help the right bricks be created. You know, for every, if you have a hundred team trainers, well, a hundred times two hundred and fifty dollars is what? That's twenty five thousand, right? You'd be at the twenty five thousand. You'd be a, a regional director rank with us if you just had a hundred people rate reach team trainer. It's not hard to reach team trainer, right? It's all doing a little bit. It's everyone doing a little bit, but it's with the design and intent. 
you know, let's say we're playing hockey together. You ever seen a hockey game when they pull the goalie at the end of the game because they're down by three goals or down by two goals and there's two minutes left and they're like, we're going to pull our goalie and we're going to put another guy on the ice or girl and we're going to try to have six on five and hopefully that one person advantage will get us a goal because we're, we're going to lose otherwise. We're running out of time. So they pull their goaltender in hockey and it's very common. And then if you're the other team and you get the puck, and you've got the puck and you can get a free shot. You could be three quarters of the end down the ice. These guys are professional athletes. They can put the puck on the net, even from the other end of the ice, if they've got time to aim and, and fire and shoot and let it go. They don't have to shoot it hard. They can slide it all. You could slide it all the way down the ice. If you did that, you'd probably get a one out of every three you'd probably make or one out of four, even though you're not a pro, just by trying to slide it into the net. You don't have to hit it hard. Well, these pros, they can do that because there's no goaltender. It's real easy to score that goal. But sometimes they're rushed and they got to shoot it quick and they miss. But the point is, it's a lot easier to score a goal when there's no one playing goaltender. Guess what? There's no goaltender in this game. There's no one trying to stop you. The only goaltender is this is your self-talk. That's it. You have no goaltender. This is this is this is hockey without a goaltender. Yeah, you got to shoot the puck. You got to put it on net. You're going to miss sometimes. But there's no goaltender here. And so the only downside is um, you may not have a definite purpose for this or a, a super burning passion to succeed in, in financially in this business or in life. You may not have a negative situation scaring you into action. Um, you know, there's a, there's a dog, there's an old story of a dog sitting on a porch howling. And you say, that dog, every time we go by that dog on that old farm porch there, he's just howling. And you wonder, why is that dog howling? And someone comes up to the porch and says, hey, why is your dog always howling? And he says, well, because he's sitting on a nail. Why doesn't he get up off the nail? Apparently, it just doesn't hurt enough. And so a lot of people are like that dog. A lot of people in America, a lot of people in the world are like that dog. They're howling. They're complaining, but they're sitting on the nail. And all they got to do is get up, get up. So if you come along and you go under that old barn porch and you take a hammer to that rolled rusty nail and pop it, jab that nail further in that dog's hind end, it'd probably jump up off the porch. And sometimes that's what we need. Sometimes you need an eviction. Sometimes you need a car breakdown. Sometimes we need a, the nail popped in our hind end a little bit to get us moving. But why wait for that? Don't wait for that. Instead, focus on creating some dreams. Focus on, you know, there's two things that motivate you, either, either a desire for gain or a fear of loss. Those are the two motivational factors. So it's desire for gain or motivation for loss. I'm sorry, desire for gain or fear of loss. So you either have to have fear push you or you have to have a strong desire, reason, strong reason why. So there's no goaltender stopping. If you went back and said, what stopped me from approaching 10 new businesses this past weekend? What stopped me? There's no goaltender. What stopped me from getting a client last month? There's no one actually hanging my phone up when I pick it up. There's no one who tell, throwing my cards away. There's no one say, don't talk to those people. There's no one actually stopping you. So what stopped you? Either you don't have a strong enough reason why you want to, or you don't have a fear big enough of what's going to happen if you don't. You know, there's a doctor, Dr. Peter Atia, great doctor. He's a longevity doctor. And he was interviewed by a 30 year old and 30 year old asked him, this doctor is now 50. And he says, you know, what do you, what do you, what's the most difficult thing about helping me as a 30 year old? And he said, the problem with the 30 year old is you're still young enough that you don't see the disease that's already in your body. You feel healthy, you feel great. And you don't realize that you could affect your eighties and your nineties significantly in your seventies. Uh, but you don't, you're not, you don't feel those effects right now. So you just keep doing it. And even when you're educated and told about it, you still don't do anything about it. Most you still don't until, unless you got a strong passion, you're totally into your health, you're totally into fitness and you're totally into, then you don't 
stop doing the things that are ending your life shorter. And you don't stop doing the things that are creating heart disease to happen faster or whatever it is. I mean, there's vapes all over the place. People think that's healthier than cigarettes and maybe it is, but it's still deadly, right? It still, it still kills you earlier than non-vaping, right? So there's all kinds of food, sugar, there's all kinds of things, alcohol, there's all kinds of things that we keep doing. Well, what is it about that? What's the same as this business? People that don't want to be healthy are the same one, not the same ones, but they can't, they can't ridicule someone who doesn't want to be financially healthy, right? So there's a lot of people doing CrossFit for their physical health, but not for their financial health. And there's a lot of people doing CrossFit for their financial health, but not their physical health. And so there's none of us should judge anyone. I'm just being transparent and sharing what I've seen in, in helping people start their own business since 1991. It's two things. Either they got to have a bad situation to fear the fear of the loss, like their husband and wife start talking about getting a divorce and the wife's going, I don't know how I'm going to earn. Or her husband says, I don't know what I'm going to earn. I don't know how I'm going to make it. And all of a sudden they need another business or an employer lays them off. Now they need another business. So a fear of loss, it's like, I'm scared now. And that motivates the heck out of people. And then there's the other is a certain super desire to be healthy. I want to be able to put my luggage in my airplane when I'm 80. I want to be able to walk up and down stairs when I'm 90. I don't want to have to be told I got to get in a walker uh, to get around. Well, that starts now. That starts now. It doesn't start. And you want retirement. You don't want to have to worry about money. It starts now in your 20s. It doesn't start. Now you can catch up. You can catch up in this business, but you got to have a super, 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 super laser focused CrossFit mentality, recruiting, training, getting customers, recruiting, training, getting customers, and not and stiff arming and ignoring the naysayers who say, I just don't know if this is for me. I don't want to do no problem. No problem. If you're really into CrossFit and I'm not, I'm just into walking and Bowflex. You don't stop doing CrossFit. You go, Hey, to each their own. You're focused on CrossFit. If someone's focused on something else, let them be. It's not a end all be all. We got to, everyone's got to do this or it doesn't work. Everyone's got to do this or it, it, it's, it must not be successful. None of you own a McDonald's. All of you'd be making $300,000 a year minimum if you did. You'd be making burgers and smell like hamburger, but you'd be making 300000 It's a good business. But none of you own them. Why? Oh, the barrier to entry. Maybe. Maybe you just don't want to own I don't want to run a McDonald's. I have no interest in running a McDonald's. So some people aren't going to have interest in building DSA. Don't let them. Don't. Who cares? Who? Of course not. But when they say yes and when they want it, are you prepared? Are you prepared? to encourage them? Are you prepared to answer their questions about the funding? Or do you just want to take the, the shortcut and say, I don't know, go ask Facebook. Are you prepared to answer what, what their goals should be or what goals are? So this video is a good, uh, this overview is a good for all of you as leaders. These aren't meant to be trainings that you show people. They're trainings for you to take your brand new people and talk to them about, okay, we want to get, help you get to area trainer. If your goal is to move through the pay plan, that's the rank that st it's the beginning. You've set up the right DNA for your business, three groups. Now I'm going to end with this. You got your three legs. You got to fill these out. Who are the people? But here's the thing. Don't let your minimums be your maximum. So you may only need, this is you, you may only need three names. Here's Tim. Here's Jessica. Here's Bill. You may only need three names to grow and Tim becomes a you know a national director leg and Bill becomes a national director and Jessica becomes a national director. Well, you'd have some great revenue. What's national director? National director is 50,000 in group volume minimum with certain balance. So you'd be at you know probably 200,000 in group volume by doing this. But don't let your minimums be your maximum because this is what happens. Bill was your first recruit, but Bill didn't do anything. Bill did nothing. So you replace Bill with Gene. Gene didn't do anything, but Gene recruited Tim. Tim recruited Lisa, and Lisa's doing it. Well, that's good because Tim and whoever the names are just compress out, and Lisa's now your organization leader. It's called taprooting. You, you work with Lisa's as, as if you enrolled her. 
because it doesn't matter if lease is on your 20th level. If Lisa goes out and builds a big group doing a million dollars in revenue, that counts toward your promotion. It doesn't matter how many levels deep Lisa is and where this revenue comes from, it's group revenue. You need group revenue. You'd have one leg doing a million dollars already right here. And then you've got Tim's leg. Tim maybe recruited three, and maybe it was down here, Kelly. Maybe Kelly's the girl getting it done, or guy. Kelly's the one getting it done, and Kelly's got 800000 in group volume under Kelly. And there's other group volume over here. So it doesn't have to be the person you enroll. It may be, but it doesn't have to be. You just know that this group is one of your three legs. So what you do is you don't let your minimum be the maximum. That means you need three, but you don't just recruit three. You need three to get through the plan, but you recruit maybe 30 or 50 a year. I don't want to do that. You don't have to do that. But if you want to fast track your way, it's like someone saying, I want to get, um, you know, 10 clients. Okay. The you're going to have to talk to, to get 10 clients, your warm market, chamber of commerce meetings, different things. You're probably going to have to have about 500 to set to 700 conversations to get 10 clients. Now, I mean, to get them immediately. Now you could talk to a hundred conversations and over time, you'll probably get 10 clients out of those hundred people, but it may take them eight years before they need a funding or five years before they need a funding. So you can wait and say, I'm only going to talk to a hundred. I'm going to keep talking to the same hundred. And I figure two of them are going to need a funding each year. Okay. Over five years, you'll get your fundings. Or you could say, I'm going to talk to 700 and get them this month. See the difference? So you don't have to, uh, um, you only need three and you never have to recruit 30 to 50. But if you want to fast track finding your three leaders, recruit 30 to 50 with all of them saying they want to build a business, not just get clients. Those count, but those aren't one of your team builders. You need three team builders. Now you may have 10 agents over here getting fundings that you're getting paid on. Good for you. They're like affiliates. You're getting paid off everything they do in roller bonuses, et cetera, but they're not building a team. You need three team builders. Okay. Three team builders. You get 30 to 50. You say they want to be a team builder. You talk to them about making regional vice president. I remember one guy. Now I've, I've never not made it to the top of the pay plans in the companies I've been in and I've never not done well building organizations. And so and I remember one time I did a training with people and I was talking about the top, top pay plan, like the benefits of it. Just like I started here, I talked about revenue sharing and royalty. I talked about and a leader, someone who had never been to the top, been halfway in a lot of companies said, you shouldn't be talking about the top rank to brand new people. And I said, why not? They said, because it's overwhelming for them. They don't think they can get there. And I said, uh, by the way, the mid rank is overwhelming for a lot of people. You know, the same people who, who don't think they can make the top rank probably don't think they can get to 100,000 in monthly revenue either, right? So is it really the size of the level? But the reality is about 5% of the people who hear about that top rank go, I see it now. Now I know why I got to do this business. I don't have a way to get revenue sharing the rest of my life. I don't have a way to earn equity in a company that may be worth billions. I don't have a way. I could become the vice president. I know one guy who was in the top 10 employees at General Motors. And he was, and I know the CEO was, she's from our town, but I don't know her. She she had a son on my nephew's soccer team. So I know of her, my brother's friends with her and stuff. Normal person, right? But extraordinary to become the top of a corporation like that. You know, the odds of that, you got to be extraordinary and politically in the right place at the right time and everything else going your way. And even still, you don't get revenue sharing. Even still. So unless you start a company, you don't get revenue sharing in jack crap. But this business you do. You give revenue sharing in people that aren't even in your team. You get to our revenue sharing ranks. You get revenue sharing. And by the way, that happens at regional vice president gold level, which is 500,000 in group revenue, 500,000 group residual revenue. You got car allowances along the way. You got expense accounts along the way, but then you get revenue sharing at 500. You don't get to 2 million. That's when you get the equity. You get revenue sharing at 500,000. So does your job offer you that today? Revenue sharing? So I show it because I want some of you to go, I'm going for it. I'm going. The Remember we said there's two things, fear of loss or desire to gain? When you realize I don't have a plan to get that, 
That is my retirement. If I can get to that rank, I'm set. That's better than a pension. Yeah, that'll pay for a lot of healthcare. Yeah. I mean, as it is, you got 500,000 in group revenue. That means your company, your group can't be making less than 100,000 a month. So you can't be making less than 30,000 a month residually. That's number one. What's that going to do for you? 30,000 a month residually. What's that going to do? You're going to be pretty good. And then you got revenue sharing. And then you got bonuses and you got overrides. I just talked about the minimum is just on your seven levels. I'm not even talking about the overrides. You're probably making $60,000, $70,000 a month at our regional vice president gold level, $500,000 in group revenue. It's crazy. Now, most will never hit it. But every one of you watching this can hit it. I can become a CrossFit athlete if I want to be. You can't tell me I can. I know for a fact I can. I'm not to the point where I've got injuries to the point where I can't recover. But if I don't go for it, I'm never going to get it. And guess what? You can make it to regional vice president get revenue sharing. You don't have to have special physical abilities. You don't have to have special strength. You don't have to have special speaking sp skills. You don't have to have special anything, except you got to remove the goaltender in your head that says you can't make it. And you got to put some fuel behind your back end and say, I'm getting off this porch. I'm not letting this nail sitting behind it anymore. I don't need my husband to do it for me. I don't need my wife to do it for me. I don't need my dad to do it anymore. I don't need my son to be my provider. I don't need anything except my desire to go build this plan. I'm going to go get it done. And then you're part of a family here who's doing it with you. So the brick rank is team trainer. Team trainer again, is $100 in personal volume and 250 in your group. So you need, here's you, you need 100 residual and in your three groups, total is $250 only in residual revenue. Okay, how do you get your $100? It can be any way you want, but one way is get a $10,000 funding, right? Another way is go get uh, three healthcare customers. Another way is get a bunch of pay, uh, DAC Protect customers. I mean, let's be real. If you made a list of 50 people you know and called all 50 and said, hey, I'm just calling to see if you've ever taken advantage of the LifeLock product or any product like that to protect your identity. You have. If I could get you better protection at a lower price, would you be interested in doing me a favor and trying my service? Oh, you haven't? If I could get you better protection in LifeLock at a lower price, would you be interested in giving a look and giving a try and protecting yourself? No, I'm not interested. Okay, no problem. No, I'm not interested. Okay, no problem. No, I'm not interested. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I'll give it a try, David. What do I got to do? I'll send you a link. You sign up. Okay, cool. <laughs> Go through your list and do that. How many people you got to call? I don't know. David, I just want to post something. Okay, well, you're not a business owner. You're a promoter, but you know, get in, get in a different business. You're not going to make money promoting by putting a post up on your page. You're not going to do any, you're not going to have enough volume doing that. You're never going to build a team doing that. Okay. I had a sign out front of my office. We just had, I don't know how many thousands of people walk through our festival. I had our business funding sign up. You know how many calls I got? Zero. I had thousands of people walk by. I had a banner up that said, start, become an independent agent with us. Uh, serious income, a beautiful banner. You know how many people signed up? Zero. How many thousands of people were in our streets saw it? I've had this office here five years. I've gotten one client, one client from drive-by. I'm spending... 3500 for an office. It's right on a retail strip. Verizon's right next door. Starbucks used to be next door. Thousands of foot traffic. Small little village. You got to go slow right in front of my building, 25 miles an hour. One client in five years. Don't think that you're going to get clients by just throwing a post up. Do it because people are going to know who you are and know what you're doing. You got to launch your business. But promoting is not how you grow your business. You don't control that. What you can do it, always do it. Always brand yourself, always advertise that way. But your way, the way you're going to do it is by looking at your list and contacting and sorting through that list, find out who's yes, who's no, and who's maybe. David, that sounds like I got to call people. Yeah, we're, unless you want to buy a McDonald's where people are coming to you because it's already built. How many retail stores open, restaurants open and close because they think people are just going to come? Not one person's walked in here looking for funding. It's a retail storefront. Not one. Well, actually one. My first week. First week we were open. I got a client. Never since. I get a lot of people in town who call. 
say, I know you're in funding. I want to talk to you. We've had one walk in. The Verizon store next door, empty. The, the, the diner that opened up down the street, they don't just come in. People don't just show up. No one's just going to show to your business. But guess what? You go to them. You outreach. You outreach. And you get rich. Outreach. Outreach your neighbors. Outreach. Outreach yourself. Outreach. Outreach that job. You can't get your job replaced sitting back passively hoping that little screen you did, that little that little video you did is going to get it done. Do those things. Do them all. And if you virally get lucky and you hit some sort of magical algorithm and you get 600 people who see it and sign up as customers, good for you. But we've got 50,000 something people and we don't have maybe one or two that that's happened for. So I'd rather you control it. You control it. You've got the keys to your future called the list that Tyler put up and you're approaching that list. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not a business owner. You're not a business owner. There's no such thing as business owners who don't get who, who don't have to promote themselves unless you buy an already established franchise and then you bought yourself a job. Go make your burgers. Go make your submarine sandwiches. Go do it. I had a friend of mine who owned Subways. He said, all I did was buy myself a job. I make the same as I do in a job and I'm here for more hours. I got to be here on weekends. I got to do all Yeah, I work for myself, but I don't really. I work for all the customers who say, where are you? It's 11 a.m. Where are you? And I said, light on the mayo. And you put too much mayo. You're a burger maker. Enjoy it. You're, you're, you're doing the same job that you wouldn't do as a kid because you didn't want to make subs. I remember saying to Morgan before she started college, honey, the price of college, I could buy you a franchise. She said, I don't want to make subs. Good, good for her. Good point. So um, listen, I've talked about a lot of stuff here. I'm super, super, super excited for all of you. You're in the right place. I'm, I'm praying, literally praying that, that God will speak to you and you, your sensitivity will be alert and the noise of your self-talk will go away. The noise of your doubt will disappear. And all that'll be there is the peace of, I'm in the right place. This is the right product to promote. I just meet, greet, and inform. And supernatural growth will happen. I don't need to worry about how many clients I'm getting. I don't have to worry about a time frame. I just got to worry about a goal. I got to put the puck in that net and there's no goal tender there. But sometimes I'm going to shoot and miss. Sometimes I'm going to shoot and miss. Who cares? There's unlimited pucks. Keep making. There's not a limited number of businesses to approach. There's not an unli- there's not a limited number of people who are going to get in this business. Approach. Some are going to be the right ones. Some are. Some will. Some won't. So what? Go on to the next person. All right, that's it for today. Let's go to any questions you have. If someone can answer questions, I don't actually see the video. So uh, Morgan or Tyler or Sharon, if you could lead that up. We don't have any. Tyler? Yep. Stand up. Yeah, go ahead, Tyler. We got a question over on YouTube. I know you've answered this before, but they're asking about 18 being the minimum age to sign up. Do you mind talking about that for a second? Mm-hmm. It's not the minimum. They can um, sign up if their parent will sign them up. Um, or their guardian. So you do not have to be 18 to be an agent with us. I know when you're signing up, it requires a date of birth that is over 18. So uh, just go ahead and put two years younger than you and roll with it. Once you're in, we can edit your day. Right now we've got it set to not allow anyone under 18 and I'll get that changed, of course. But for now, as long as your parent guardian is letting you, go for it. All right, thank you. All right, we have Harlequin. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Happy Monday. You as well. Yeah, um, I have a question. You did mention the um, pharmacy program today while you were talking. Do we have an update on when that's going to be available? Um, The only update is I got this morning, actually. Uh, I was told three weeks, uh, two weeks ago. I asked for an update and they said, we're still on target for next week of having something for you to look at. Um, We're building everything in the back end. It's actually, our end's done. So the only update I can say is because we don't turn the key on, we're still playing middleman on when they turn the key on. 
Uh, so I'm I'm ex still expecting August, but as I told them today, guys, I've teased this for too long because I was told two weeks a long time ago, and then the product changed. We decided, yeah, we want compound pharmacy. Yes, we want more uh, drugs. So we'll launch once rather than launching and then changing everything a month later. Um, so we're we're it's coming. I just don't have a date. Um, I wouldn't count on it for August, but our goal is still to have it launch in August. Okay, fabulous. I'd say, Thank you. I'd say by the time we're in October, we should be talking about how exciting it is for all the customers we got in September. But I don't know when that day will be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Janet, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Good morning. Good morning, Janet. So I was at a networking event this morning and yeah. was presented with an interesting thing. This guy has a ministry um, for prisoners that they, when they get out, they give them a four month um, training on starting a business and mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, I would love to help. Um, and I gave him all the criteria. They have to have the revenue and da-da-da-da. But as far as recruiting, there's no way to do the background check, right? Um, we don't do a background check on agents. Right. So if so we believe in second chances, we believe in second chances, but we don't believe in, um, you know, violating our integrity rules. So... We'll allow people to try it, but if they break the rules, we deactivate them pretty pretty quickly. But yeah, if okay. someone's uh, incarcerated and they're coming out of incarceration, uh, they've paid their dues, they've they've done their time. Um, we say, if you if you want a career with us and you're looking for a second chance, come on, let's help you create a story for yourself. But you know, like you you and Wade have both talked about, we don't do sex offenders, we don't do domestic violence. We're talking about we when we say we don't, we don't do any lending ourselves, nor does Bank Breezy. We represent other providers. So they have there's certain lenders who have risk criteria who they will and won't lend to or advance money to. But that's not recruiting. Recruiting agents right. is not the same as getting customers. Uh, so we Bank Breezy has nothing to do with DAC's recruiting. DAC allows people who have background issues. Uh, someone has a DUI, someone beat their wife, someone beat their husband, someone cheated on their spouse. We don't know any of that. All we say is people make mistakes. And uh, as long as you don't have financial, even if you've had financial fraud, we wouldn't know it when you join because we don't do a background check. When I'm talking we, I'm talking about recruiting reps. Right. But okay. if we get a complaint, we have to investigate and we deactivate people if they're violating rules. So Becoming a business owner with us as a DAC agent is different than a client. Now, we're not saying let's go out there and turn the other way for people that are evil, mean, spirited people. I know you're not saying that, but someone who's coming out and they've been incarcerated and they're coming out and they're looking for a, a leg up here, DAC, let's go. Someone who got all E's in high school, we got DAC, give them a leg up. Wow, you're willing to take all E's? Absolutely, because there's a lot of kids who got all E's and nothing to do with their intelligence had to do with their parents were beating each other or they grew up on the wrong side of the tracks and dad was on drugs and mom was on drugs. And, you know, we don't judge people for their past performance. Uh, we believe in people's future performance. As long as they're going to deliver with integrity, let's rock and roll together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we've got V Wright. You can go ahead and unmute yourself, V. Hello, V. Can't hear you, by the way. Hello? You're there, Hello? you're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up, V. Okay, who's next? Well, V is getting her sound worked away. V, if you want to type your question in chat or email it to us at support at David Allen Capital, we can um, assist that way just because it was breaking up there. Uh, James H., you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, David. Hi, James. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Doing great. Just another question on the health care. I'm talking with a customer. He has 13 employees. Now, okay. is that is that going to be 13 customers or would that just be one customer? 
Yeah, um, it depends on how ClearPoint sets it up. Uh, you'll get paid on 13, be 13 times 40 either way. So it may be one customer in the books because that employer is going to pay for everybody and they set up one account. Um, but you'll get paid per, you'll get 40 you won't get 40, but you'll be 40 residual revenue per account. Then you get 20 to 50% of that. Um, so it depends on whether the employer wants to pay for everybody or not. The employer may just be saying, hey, I'll make this available and I'll give you money in your paycheck. You pay for them yourself. I don't want to see it. I don't want to worry about it. You put it on your own credit card or put it on your own bank. And so sometimes employers make it available to their employees uh, and don't pay for it. So that would be a bunch of individual accounts. Sometimes they pay for it and put it all under their company name. So it really depends on how they negotiate with ClearPoint or Clear Clear uh, Water. Right. The, the employee does pay 75% and the uh, the employer pays 75% and the employee pays 25%. With your and he said he just wants uh, he just wants a better coverage for them. Yeah, absolutely. So it would really come down to how they work that out. He's okay. probably paying for it now and then deducting from their paycheck. The 25% is what I'm guessing. And that's usually how they do it, right? They pay it all, all but right. then some from the employee's paycheck. They could do the same thing with us. It would show as one account, but you'd have 14 uh, accounts times $40 that you get in residual revenue. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. All right, it looks like we've got one more hand up. Uh, Brian Speet, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Brian. Hey, how you doing? Good, buddy. How are you? I am excellent. Um, I'd like to ask a relevate question, if you don't mind, or probably a part Absolutely. A, part B. Go ahead. So you mentioned last week that uh, it's pretty much on the back burner as far as the consumer part of what we're going to do with relevate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, since we, we need to get customers, is there a way to bring in folks under Relevate as customers without having to worry about the $15 bonus uh, that they would get if they bring in other folks? You can bring in small businesses now. We're not signing up the consumers yet, but you can bring in small businesses, just no individuals. So... The small businesses we bring in, we can we can bring them on in under pay any day, correct? Yeah, if they're eligible for pay any day. So we've not take. It's not that we're not selling relevant. We're just not selling the individual plan yet. We're still marketing the small business plan and the large business plan. Yes. Now, what qualifies for pay any day? It depends on the the size of the business, right? They got to have, uh, there's a risk that Relevate takes when they advance pay any day. So not everyone's eligible for pay any day. Those rules have not well, changed. If they're not, if they're not eligible for pay any day, then what's the difference if we bring them in as individuals or we bring them in under a company umbrella? The difference is a company has a lot of employees. So they're bringing in a group of people under one account. So um, they sign up as a group and then the employer sends over 70 people payroll every week or seven people payroll a week. So it's, there's a group of people. Um, that's the account we're signing up. We're not doing individuals where it's not employer related, where some bill just wants to get an online bank account. We're not doing that yet. Okay. I, so they don't, I, I hear what you're saying, I, but it doesn't help us on the customer side. Well, we're, we're, let me put it this way. We don't do personal loans, right? Correct. But we do business loans, right? Yes. We don't do personal Relevate, but we do business Relevate, right? Yes. So it's the same thing. We're going after business accounts with Relevate. We're not going after personal now. Um, there's reasons for that. And until those reasons go away, we're not, we're only doing business. I, I got you on it. All right. So, yeah. then, so it doesn't okay. help your personal customers. Yeah. It's, I wish we could get personal loans too, because you know, how many people are getting credit cards right now on college campuses that are, are, you know, would be great to earn on that. Right. And help them out a different way, but we don't have a product that fits that yet. So we don't have a consumer 
uh, relevant account yet that we're marketing. Gotcha. All right. That All right. Sense, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 can, I can at least say this. I started doing commercials for the prescription plan as little teasers out there. And that's working so far. I've been getting some uh, some good blowback on it. I kind of tipped my hand with it the other day. My woman friend said, wow, why didn't you just tell them the whole thing? And I said, because I don't know what the whole thing is yet. I'm just putting it out there. Yep. So it's it's good. I, I encourage you. Uh, you know, I said to the guys at the pharmacy thing today, I said, I wish I would have never mentioned it yet because we're in the same situation. So I'm learning, you know, when you tease things, um, then you have pressure to deliver them, right? And so uh, as you're seeing with the relevant individual plan, you know, they went through a roller coaster of situations. And so it's still not live. And I don't see that happening with the pharmacy plan because we're further ahead and we've developed a lot more and the product is already done uh, with a couple of tweaks being done to it. So I see that they're in control of it. You know, if the money transfer, international money transfer was already live, when they thought it'd be live, we would have launched the individual plan with Relevate a long time ago. So there's a reason it's held back. And until that changes, it's going to stay held back. So I would just say, promote what we got in the bag. And then you never have the pressure of when's it launching, when's it launching. And I'm in the same situation, right? So I'm gotcha. I'm holding on to some things that we're working on in the backgrounds to launch that you're just not going to say it till I, I know for sure when it's coming out because there's too many things that happen, too, too many changes in the landscape and it just creates pressure. So we're leaving it. Seriously, we, we've got a lot of stuff that we can work with right now. If we don't need anything else. We could build it just with what we got. Yep. I mean, when we think about when we started, we just had funding and we had people making significant money just with funding and our funding had more declines than approvals. So now if we just had funding, it'd be rocking. We add ERCs and add what we've already got. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. You bet. Oh, there was one more hand up, but it looks like it went down. I think it was Eric Parker. I will, there we go. Um, Ask to unmute you there, Eric, if you want to unmute yourself. I just had, wanted to clarify, when I'm recruiting, I'm recruiting individuals to sign up under my company, or I'm recruiting other companies to sign up individually. I'm are, you about recru- are you talking about recruiting agents, or are you talking about uh, getting customers? I'm recruiting agents. Yeah, so, well, an agency is an, is a, it could be an individual, and it could okay. be a company. So if you recruit uh, Chase Bank and they want to be an agent with us, they can sign up as an agent and refer all their customers to us. Um, you know, so, but you can also recruit individuals. So just like you're an independent agent, you can recruit independent agents, or you can recruit companies who want to partner with us. Okay, okay. And then well, as I'm recruiting people, you mentioned that I would do, payroll for them so i would determine the payroll then send that over for you guys i guess cut the check to do direct deposits no no unless i misunderstood yeah yeah you misunderstood so we've got a lot of products one of them is a payroll product we you do not have to handle anything you want to go through the basic training of getting started but you're you are an independent agent to go get customers that's your primary role Right. right go market our funding market our ercs Market our healthcare. That's your primary role, getting customers. This call is designed for people that want to also build a network of reps that they get paid on them. And so to build a network of reps, you recruit them, you train them, you encourage them, you support them, and you be a good example of getting customers yourself. But you never have to track their sales. You never have to pay them anything. We pay them direct, just like we pay you direct. Whoever recruited okay. you doesn't have to tell us what you've done and not done. We're tracking all that and we pay you direct. Um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Okay. So I recruit them and train them and make sure they're doing what they got to do. And you guys handle the payroll part. We handle all the pay, the commission. It's not called payroll because they're not right. employees, but we, we cover pay, giving them their revenue share. Yeah. Right. Right. right you right. got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Welcome aboard, buddy. Okay, that looks like everything. Is that right? The questions, yep. All right, cool. Then guys, let's have a great week. Um, Set your goals if you don't already have them. 
and think about that thing that there's two things that motivate you, either a passion for gain or a fear of loss. So uh, if you're not motivated, you're missing one of those two things. So what is it going to take? What's your, what's your reason why I have to change to move you? Um, or what do you have to start imagining is if you don't fix this, if you don't change this, what's your 80s and 90s going to look like? What's your 60s going to look like? I mean, you're already set financially. Okay, then maybe you you don't want to die and say I didn't make an impact. I didn't make I didn't help steer a lot of people to financial freedom through DAC, or I didn't help encourage businesses who had good ideas and they closed. How many businesses are going to close in your town because you don't tell them about DAC? You know what is it? I don't know. You got to find it inside you. Like Eminem said, you got to look deep down. You got to find that thing inside of you, and um, that's all it takes. That's the secret. It really is that simple. So God bless you all. Have a great day. We'll see you on Wednesday with Wade, Wednesday at 1130 a.m.